question from Twitter. This one's from Natish. How can you thrive as the sole minimalist in a family that believes in maximalist principles? So stating your favorite color is not a judgment about the value of other colors. And I find that to be really important. If your favorite color is blue and everyone else in your family really loves red, it doesn't mean that you're right and they're wrong and they're wrong and you're right. It just means that you have different preferences. Now, it is true that maybe your family would benefit from having a more minimalist life. They would benefit from this preference. But forcing a preference on to someone, because it is like forcing your favorite shirt onto someone. Yes, you know what? TK might look great if I uh, gave him the blue or the purple shirt I was wearing a few episodes ago for episode 400. He might look great, but if he doesn't feel great in it, then I'm forcing it on him. Then we're both going to feel bad because now he dislikes it, I dislike it. And so I want to point something out that often happens in a scenario like this. You have a family, especially if you live with the family, but it can be distant family who lives elsewhere as well. What happens is we get annoyed by their preferences. And then my default state is to then annoy them further with my preferences. And it becomes this arms race of annoyance. I'm annoyed by you, so I'm going to annoy you back. And now you're annoyed by me, so you're going to annoy me back. There's this constant escalation that is totally unnecessary. And so the best thing I've ever done with respect to minimalism is never proselytize it. I'm now out there saying, hey, look at me, I'm a minimalist. And you should become a minimalist too. And here are the seven ways you can do it. Here's how you get your certification. Here are the things you should get rid of. Here are the things you should buy to organize. Here are the things that you should declutter. Here are the things going forward, the brands that you should have. Here's the car that I want you to own. Here's the job you should have. Because now I'm inflicting the other people with my preferences, creating wounds in the relationship with my preferences. It's okay to have your preferences without needing them to have your same preferences. Yeah. You know, a lifestyle isn't really a lifestyle if everyone else needs to live it in order for me to be able to live it. A worldview isn't really a worldview if everyone in the world needs to first have my view in order for me to have it. And so sometimes when we find beliefs or practices or strategies that work for us, we treat it like an MLM. Oh man, I found something that's really good. It's going to change my life if my entire family buys in. And if they don't, all of a sudden, this thing that I'm bought into is actually empty and worthless. Is that what you really think of the things that you're doing? If the things you're doing can't work unless everybody in your life buys in, that's probably a clue that that thing is worth abandoning. The, The way it works is you say, I found something that makes me a better me and I trust myself to work out the details of living that out, fleshing that out in a world where everyone else doesn't have to think the same. So for Natish, when we think about living with someone or being friends with someone, it doesn't have to do with forcing them to be more like me, but tolerating their preferences, eventually accepting their preferences, respecting their preferences, Unless they're doing something that's harmful, obviously. don't respect something that's harmful, but that's not what we're talking about here. And eventually eventually you can get to a point where you actually appreciate their differences. The fact that they enjoy some. Later in the episode, we're going to go through Jordan's home. And I don't just tolerate the fact that he has a completely different set of tastes from me. I don't even just respect it. I really appreciate how much joy he gets from that. Or Professor Sean, he has this pin collection that he really gets immense joy from. Now, for me, if I wanted to to heap my preferences on him, I said, well, the, this is actually the only pin you should use here. It's this Pilot G207. This is the perfect pin. Any pin besides this is not minimalist. I don't sanction it. And you're not allowed to like it. And what am I doing there? I'm extracting all of the joy that he gets out of that. And the truth is, while his pins would get in the way for me, they would be clutter for me. He gets an immense benefit from them. He gets to experience them in a way that I don't experience them. Instead of just tolerating that, I love that about his experience with those. And I wouldn't want to deprive him of that. Yeah. You know, when when it comes to introducing changes to your life and you're living in a space where other people don't think and act like you, you have to start in the short term by focusing on what's within your locus of control, 
while you develop strategies for expanding your sphere of influence. But you never build momentum. You never get started. You, ne- you never develop strength if you're always thinking about other people, right? And so if I live in a home where I'm committed to minimalist principles and everyone else is committed to maximalist principles, what's the space in that home that I have some influence over? And maybe it's just one desk. Despise not the day of small beginnings, right? That desk is going to be the best space in this house. It's going to be the most aesthetically pleasing. It's going to be the most minimalist space. And that's where I'm going to practice working it out. It's when we refuse to cherish and value those small opportunities that we lose the opportunity to be people of influence who can inspire others. That's what generates the curiosity. When you can focus on those small spaces you do have control over and go all in rather than fighting people over the whole house. They're never gonna take you seriously anyway. They don't wanna be converted. They don't wanna have to change every time you change. Let them see your character as you work it out within the context of what you have influence over. Speaking of influence, since we've been talking about social media clutter today. I've never been influenced by a social media influencer. Uh Uh-oh. However, there are a lot of influential people who have influenced me by not even trying to influence me. There are writers, there are people who are on social media with large followings who influence me without trying to force me into their point of view. And so when we're talking to Natish about being influential to the people with maximalist principles in her family, what does that mean? It means setting an example that other people are eager to follow because they see the benefits of simplifying and their benefits might be slightly different from yours, but it's so much more compelling. If I walk over and I say, wow, that desk seems so clean. It seems so calm. TK, where'd you get that from? Or, yeah. or who told you to, do, to, to organize like that? Then it opens up the door for the conversation about living simply, living with less. Yeah, absolutely, man. Did you enjoy this standalone Patreon highlight? If so, you can listen to full episodes of the Minimalist Private Podcast available exclusively on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash the minimalists or click the link in the description. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free.